And I thought, what's that? Are they booing me? It was a bit strange the way he talked, the way he acted. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was really funny. But um, yeah, all I thought was, you know, playing for a big club like um, like United. I have to come back with my boys, show them where, um, where their dad played football. This is the Chef United Way podcast with In Good Nick and Hal Stewart. A fan's favourite joins us now, a Suriname-born defender who learned his craft in the famed Ajax youth setup before carving out a very successful career in England. A right back who played for Sheffield United from the year 2000, making over 50 appearances, Gustav Renier Uhlenbeek, aka Goose. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the intro. Where are we uh, speaking to you from here, uh, Gus? I'm uh, um, just outside on the outskirts of Amsterdam, a place called Batu Fedorp. It's a bit of a village, um, but it's like five minutes I'm in Amsterdam. What, what, you... was, that, what was that place called again? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Nick, have a run up at that. Try <laughs> I, miss, I missed that. <laughs> Batu Fedorp. Yeah. Right, we'll believe you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's got a number in it. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> you were born in Suriname, but you grew up yeah. in Amsterdam. So what was yeah, your childhood true. in the Netherlands capital actually like? Um, yeah, it's been good as far as I can remember. Um, it's great growing up in, um, in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, like any other kid, really. You know, just playing outside a lot, you know, most of the time football. Um, yeah, but all kinds of different things. So, um, yeah, it's been good growing up. Good stuff. Did you uh, did you always want to be a footballer? Or was, was there anything else that you would have liked to have done if you kind of weren't a footballer, if you like? No. <laughs> just <laughs> no, football? From, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just football. From an early age, um, football was the main thing for me. Um, I did a bit of judo. As well as a kid, but I think when I was about 12 or 13, um, I did both. But then I lost the tournament against the girl, and that was the end for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no. We should just state there's no shame, of course, in in losing to those of a different gender. No, no, definitely not, definitely not. But then I thought, you know, I might as well focus solely on um, on football. Yeah, less chance of losing to a women's team because you would never have played against one. I get that, Gus. Yeah, that's, definitely. That's good, definitely. <laughs> good thinking. Good thinking. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did you always play as a right back or a right midfielder? Or was there ever a time when a young Gus found himself as a striker? Well, not as a striker. I was a winger um, in my early days, especially um, uh, when I was younger. I was a winger, you know. Um, as I got a lot of pace, you know, they just played me the ball. I just run and score goals or cross the ball uh, for others to score goals. So, um, yeah, and as I got, got older, no, I, I, as a winger, I went to Ajax um, and I started as a winger there um, and then midfield player. You know, normally when you're in the U team at Ajax, you, you sort of play all kind of positions. You know, so the, the wingers play play midfield or even right or left back um, so that you know all the all kinds of different uh, uh, parts uh, in the team so yeah that was it really but I was a winger. Mm. How did you um, come about getting into the Ajax youth setup then because we all know how good that well not good how great that Ajax youth setup is or has been over the past kind of 20 odd years maybe obviously mm -hmm. more. Yeah um, well I was playing uh, for a local team in Amsterdam and obviously um, at the time they got all the scouts um, everywhere, you know, all the way through, through Holland. So, um, yeah, I was around 14 or 15. I got a call, the invitation um, to go to um, the old Amsterdam um, arena, sort of, called the Meer. Uh, for a talk and they said they wanted to have me the next season so um, that was it really so you know as as, as it um, grew bigger and bigger um, Ajax they, they've got scouts everywhere but um, yeah we had we had uh, players from um, all over Holland to be honest. What uh, what players did you kind of grow up playing with at Ajax were there any players that kind of we would know right now? Uh, 
Michael Moores. Wow, played for Rangers. Uh, used to be at Rangers, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top player. Um, he was. Um, he sort of lived around me as well. So we we traveled together to um, um, to Ajax when we were kids. Um, yeah, and then the likes of um, let's see. Um, yeah, Mashano Fink, sort of the Boer brothers, both of them. Yeah, Frank um, and Ronald. Edwin, uh, yeah, Edwin van der Zaar. Um, yeah, so they're they're most famous names, I would say. You know, there, there were a lot of names. talents. Yeah, yeah, but there were there were a lot of talented players um, at the time um, in the youth teams. But you know, for some reason they uh, they never made it. You know, um, yeah. Yeah, you hear about that a, a lot, and I can imagine in a youth setup like Ajax, it's going to be even tougher. You mentioned Edwin van der Zaar; even his son is currently uh, in the Ajax setup. So yeah. there's a great there's a great tradition. What was it actually like playing for what I would imagine was your dream club? Um, yeah, it's great. It's great. You know, um, especially growing up um, in Amsterdam. When you live in Amsterdam, the only team you want to play for is Ajax. So to get the call is one thing, but then to make your debut is um, is another thing. So um, yeah, that's a moment to, to never forget. Yeah, definitely. You played for three other teams in Netherlands, though, didn't you? Uh, before coming to this country, well, yeah. this country, not not kind of the yeah, country yeah. you're in at the moment. <laughs> My adapted country. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So so uh, you came to Ipswich first. Yeah. How yeah. did that come about? How did you get the call from uh, from Ipswich? Um, it was a friend of George Burley, the manager at the time. Um, Romeo Zondervan, he used to play there as well. I think at the time when Muren and Tyson, or just after, played there. So he was sort of scouting um, in Holland overseas for, uh, for George Burley. And um, yeah, he asked me, he said, um, you know, I've got a team in England. They're looking for uh, this type of player. Um, would you like to go? And I said, yeah, of course, because um, you know English football was always my dream. You know, watched it as a kid, match of the day all the time, every weekend. Um, you know, some of my favorite players like Kevin Keegan, uh, Fifth Anderson. You know, they were my my type of players to watch. So um, yeah, to get a call to go and play in England is, uh, you know, they didn't have to ask me twice. It's lucky that you were a fan of England because you spent the bulk of your career playing for a variety of clubs in England. Yeah. You you also played for Fulham alongside some players who also represented Sheffield United. So what do you recall of your former teammates? I'm just going to list uh, four of them who played for Fulham and Sheffield United and you just tell me maybe a little bit about each one. Uh, yeah. Jeff Horsfield first. Yeah, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> what a player he was. He, he was quite a character. Um, you know, he, he was a no-nonsense striker, but um, yeah, he could score goals for fun. It was unbelievable. Um, you know, his work rate. Um, yeah, unbelievable. Great lad. And, um, you know, next to football, he was, he, was, he was a good lad. What about Barry Hales? Yeah. Baz, <laughs> he's another one. He's yeah, another striker. Uh, scored unbelievable goals. Um, yeah, good lad, strong. Um, yeah, yeah, another one. Good lad as well. Okay, this next one is uh, one of a uh, Sheffield United fans' favourite ever strikers. So I hope you're going to say really nice things about Paul Pesky Salido. Yeah, I knew that name was coming. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's unbelievable. He's such a nice lad. Um, if you met him outside of football, you would never knew he was a player. You know, he was down to earth, um, small. <laughs> well, Nick's going to love this because I have met Paul Pesky Salido outside, <laughs> outside of football. Uh, and, and I asked Paul about football because he was watching a game and asked if he was enjoying it, and he said no, he hated football. <laughs> <laughs> Did you experience the fact that Paul Besky Salido didn't like watching football, he just liked playing it? Um, no, well, sort of, now that you say it, I think, yeah, because most players always love to watch football. 
And I think he was the one, you know, when we went to training, we said, like, did you watch this and that match? And he was like, no. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> did he even <laughs> like playing sense. football? <laughs> yeah, he used to love playing football. Yeah, good, playing good. and playing football, yeah, yeah. He was so nippy, um, yeah, quick. Scored goals for fun as well. But, um, yeah, great character. But I think his problem was uh, that his wife was even more famous than him. Mm, yeah, and that's still the case. <laughs> yeah, that's still the case. They always talk about, you know, Brady, Ken Brady, yeah. this and that. Mm. But, um, no, I've, no, I've also met guy. her as well, but that's a separate story. Um, story. <laughs> the final one is uh, Rob Scott. Do you remember Rob Scott? Rob Scott. I know the name, but um, I've not played with him I think he was at Fulham at the same time as you a fellow defender he also played at Sheffield United but only very briefly his brother was Andy Scott so uh, yeah I did, that's why I said do you remember because he was only there yeah, with you for a yeah, very short time I know the time. name I know the name but I can't remember playing with him or no I'll uh, tell you what Gus I don't even remember Rob Scott I remember <laughs> Andy Scott but I don't remember Rob Scott yeah yeah <laughs> how long did he play for us for Hal that's a good do you remember well, he was with he was a Sheffield United player for well, I've got to look it up, but I would say probably yeah. probably with the club for three years, but uh, oh, wow. didn't play many games. Fair oh, enough, oh. fair enough. Mm. Um, so at Fulham, um, you were managed by Kevin Keegan, is that right? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, what what was well, he like I was as a manager? I was in the final year. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, yeah, he had a know how of football, but he, it, it was just simple with him, like. If if the if the opponent scored three goals, we had to score four. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, a very it, yeah. Really. A manager um, that would just really really attack minded. You mean just yeah, went yeah, for it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not he's not going to sit on a one nil one nil uh, no, score line. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Or play like defensive, or park the bus or whatever. No, no. We just went gun ho. Did, but, did um, you, did, sorry, did you like that sort of management? Would you are you would you rather be an attacking fullback than a defensive fullback. I'd rather be an attacking fullback. Yeah, yeah, I thought you would. To be honest, yeah, with the, definitely, with the definitely. United, Espe- you... Especially, especially the way the way the way he played, yeah, or in sort of like a three-five-two system. Um, you know, as <laughs> as I went from winger to back um, at um, at Ipswich, Burley used to play, uh, yeah, like a three-five-two with attacking wing backs as well. So I think that benefits my game really well. Yeah, it mm. makes perfect sense having been a winger that you would enjoy the, the going forward side yeah, of football. Yeah, and definitely. also, you mentioned Kevin Keegan was one of your childhood heroes and then he becomes your manager. That's great. Yeah, yeah, that, that was crazy. That was, that was unbelievable. I remember getting the call, got the call from him because I was in my final year at um, Ipswich, end of the season. And um, I went to Spain, to be honest. I went to um, Compostela, Santiago de Compostela. I went there, met the chairman, director, and stuff like that. They just went down from Primera División. And I went there to see the club, have a meal with, with the president and all that. And they wanted to have me. They wanted to sign me. But um, I wasn't sure. My wife was pregnant at the time. There was no direct flight. We had to fly to Madrid, to Santiago de Compostela, and stuff like that. So then I thought, hmm. I wasn't really sure. So I went back to Ipswich. I was going to sign. And then on that day, Keegan phoned me and he went like, I guess it's Kevin Keegan, this and that. Um, have you signed already? I'm like, no. He said, well, I would love to come to have you at um, Fulham. He said, just come by, have a look at the training facilities, the ground and stuff. And then um, that's what I did. I never looked back. Did you ever say um, you were I'm my childhood sure. hero? I'm not, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I can't remember. I think I think, wasn't uh, too much of, uh, you know, yeah, you're oh, excited. Yeah. Do, do you yeah. think it makes a difference when the manager phones you and says that I really want you rather than an agent or a, nowadays a sporting director? I think so, yeah. Because nowadays, you know, just agents bring you to clubs or whatever. And around that time, you know, when the manager says he wants you, then obviously he's seeing you, uh, you know, it's not just like he's he's watched the tape or... He heard it from someone else. Um, yeah, he phoned me and he said, you know, I want you. I've seen you play. You know, I like your style and you'll benefit playing for me. So um, 
obviously that was there was a big plus yeah and, um, wow when keegan says that you know you've made it yeah definitely <laughs> definitely and um you know a man of that statue it's uh it's, it's unbelievable so yeah um, yeah well that's brilliant i love that story and, and he's also a hero of mine as well what an incredible player I, my dad has shown me so many videos but i was wondering yeah. was there ever a chance to represent the republic of suriname at international level for you um there were there, there were talks of it um yeah i don't know early on in my career i think but then at the time you needed a, a double nationality na- nationality yeah i needed a Suriname passport and all that so there was too much hassle going on um you know that i thought well just just leave it would have been nice you know to get some uh, international experience but um yeah it wasn't meant to be Mm. Oh, that's sad, yeah. Um, so, year 2000, you joined Sheffield United, our team. Um, how did that come about? And did Neil Warnick pick up the phone and give you a call? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, not sh- I'm not sure, to be honest. It was after, um, after Fulham. Let me see. Yeah, it was after Fulham, yeah. Uh, I can't remember how the call went. I'm yeah, guessing. I'm guessing he didn't give you a call I'm because not you'd not have sure. probably not come to Sheffield United if he did give you the call. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. <laughs> what character he is, by the way. Yeah, yeah it's right. unbelievable. But um, yeah, from from the from the first minute I arrived, um, you know, everything felt good. It was a bit odd, but um, yeah, what a character. Yeah, what was your first impression of him then? Other than this, this guy is a a weird, odd Sheffield bloke. Yeah, it was a bit strange the way he talked, the way he acted. Um, yeah, it was it was really funny. But um, yeah, all I thought was you know playing for a big club like um, like United, and um, that, that was the main thing. And obviously, you know, I spoke to him. Obviously, he wanted me. He told me what my role was going to be, you know, and um, yeah, went on from there. Gus, I, I knew I was going to like you, but I love you now because you just called us United, and the amount of ex-players that I speak to that call us Sheffield and you've just <laughs> <Yeah>. made my night. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely thank you. United. United <laughs> <all the way. laughs> Top man. Uh, who were your close friends during your time at United? Um, I would say Sobs. I Yeah, I was a lot with Sobs. Um, let's see. Obviously, some of the younger lads as well, like a Jax, Monty, they, they, they were good guys as well. But I think Saabs, um, yeah, and a couple of the French lads, you know, like the Jeffo and um, uh, Laurent. Um, mm. Yeah, and Patrick Souf. Oh, of course. Oh, as mm. well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But obviously, the French were like a close-knit, um, um, the, the two of them, or the three of them as well. So... Um, yeah, I think um, those guys. Mm. But to be honest, we, we we had a great bunch of lads, you know, all of them from Keith Curl to Tongi, um, Deflin, Pesh. Yeah, everyone really. We had a great side back then, didn't we? All those players that you've just listed off. I said, yeah. I, I, don't, I can't remember which one it was, if it was Paul Devlin or... Or Wayne Quinn, that I said that we had so many great players and we didn't get promoted. I just can't believe. Yeah, that. I know, I know. I just thought about that as well. We 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 had an unbelievable squad as well. If you if you look at the squad we had, it, it, yeah, it's a miracle we didn't get promoted. I mean, you're right. Not only did we not get promoted, we actually finished quite far down the table in uh, yeah. in that in that 2000 2001 season. And I was just as amazed at the time. I remember. Gus, uh, I went to your first ever training session at uh, I think Shirecliff back in the old days as yeah. a, as a, what well, I'd have been I'd have been fourteen and uh, <laughs> I was there. don't make it don't make him seem really old. No, I'm just trying, I'm yeah. just trying, to, <laughs> trying to make it sound less weird. <laughs> I was on my, long already. <laughs> I was on my school holidays, and my mum took me to see the Blades train, and I remember I, I saw you for the for the first time, and. And I was getting quite excited about because you were a new signing. And it's always nice, I think, when you get a new signing. It's always exciting as well when that new signing is from something like the famed Ajax Academy. So, yeah, I, I remember you so fondly, of course, and, and really enjoyed watching you. 
Yeah, good. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> so, during your career, um, which club do you think you played your best football at? Mm. Yeah, if I look at us uh, like sort of a season long um, back to back performance, I would say Bradford City. All right, I would okay. say because obviously at at all the clubs you played, you know, you get you get through a good spell, then you get sort of through a bad spell, maybe get on the bench or whatever. But at City, I remember I've played all the games that season and I yeah, yeah, I I could say that was one of my best seasons. Is that where yeah. you enjoy playing your football the most as well? Um well, I enjoyed playing football at, at all the clubs, you know, we, all the clubs, you know, especially with the fans and, you know, the players, um, the staff and everything. Um, but if, if, if I have to say, really, my performances on the pitch, mm. back to back, I would say Bradford City. That's you know, interesting. Especially, I... especially, especially home and away, because normally sort of like home, you do really well in front of your own fans and all that. And sort of away, sort of, you know, you get the odd strange game or whatever. But yeah, I would say Bradford City. Yeah, I've got some some good friends who support uh, the Bantams and I, I told them I'd be speaking to you and, mm. and they were all really excited about that. So you're obviously remembered very fondly by Bradford City fans. And that makes sense if you say you played your best football there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's that's the most um, enjoyable thing as well that all the clubs I've played, you know, I had such a good um, interaction with the fans and, um, you know, that made it um, worthwhile being yeah. in England. Did any other fans chant goose every time you got the ball or was that just the Bramall Lane fans? No, I think it went from from fan to fan because wow. <laughs> I didn't know I think, that. I think, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was uh, because f- I think first it went um, Ipswich, and I thought, "What's that? Are they booing me?" Yeah, I thought you might say that. Yeah. Oh yeah. no! So we didn't oh, even yeah, invent yeah. it. Can I just say I thought it was Gary Sinclair, <laughs> no. the stadium announcer. I I thought he'd. He thought your name was Goose Ullenbeek and it was Gus. And he said Goose. So that's why we chanted it, because we thought he got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's why, yeah. So it came from Ipswich? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so I thought they that. were booing me and they were like, ooh. So obviously to every club I went, sort of the fans sort of adapted that. Yeah. So is it is it Gus or would you say Goose? Or where, where did Goose come from? Well, it's Gustav. Ah, that's right. that's the full name. But then, obviously, everyone says, like in England, they say Gus. In Holland, they say Gus. Ah. You say G W S. <laughs> so. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to call you Goose uh, from now on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's good. what I that's what I called you. Yeah. Just make back, it a bit longer. Yeah, but goose. That's what I called you back when I was 14 watching you train. And that's not weird, Nick. It's a really fun <laughs> thing to do. And if you ever get a chance to watch <laughs> training, it's great. Um, so, who was the best player you played with at Sheffield United? The best technical player? Oh, at United. <clears throat> I would say technical wise, probably Sufo. Wow. Like wow. technical ability. You know, he, he was unbelievable, like like most um, African players, you know, mm. like strong, physically strong and good technique. But if you talk in terms of um, like midfield passing and see a pass, it's probably Tongi or Brownie, Michael yeah. Brown. Yeah, that, that doesn't they were, They're us. really good in midfield. I think mm. uh, Sufo had a tremendously yeah. strong... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, even, even though, um, and, yeah, and Love as well, Peter, Peter and Love. Oh, he was another player. one with trickery and, and quick feet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Nuddy. So you mentioned Patrick Sufo. What yeah. do you remember personally of the Battle of Bramall Lane? Because you were actually substituted for Patrick Sufo. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. But who was it against? West Bromwich Albion, and the game was abandoned. We lost oh, yeah, 3-0. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He knows now. now. He, he knows, knows now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure everyone got involved, I think. I think Kid Curl, um, the French guys, Sufo, I don't know what started it off, but um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was unbelievable, yeah. Was, was Neil Warnett telling his players to go down injured? Well, it... He, he was he was a character. He is like you know, um, you know, if something happens, just go down or, you know, players like that can't play. Just just kick him off the field or whatever, you know. What I mean, but but that's the type of manager he was. Yeah. You know, he was a character. He was just he was just going ballistic. Yeah. And um, that was his type of play, his style, really, sort of to yeah to get players to get. So- Goose, all weird up, but he he loved to play. But sometimes he just went like uh, mental. I, I was watching the highlights back of the Battle of Bramall Lane against West Brom, and I'm getting the sense now that you didn't know that it was all going to kick off because as you come off the field, you go up to Patrick Sufo, and even though we're down to ten men and we're already losing, I think two 0 at that stage. You sort of say to Sufo, you know, I'm sort of guessing what you said, but you, you give him like, come along, we can still win this, that kind of attitude that you always had. So I yeah. don't think you knew that Santos had a grudge with a West Brom player and that all Santos wanted to do was foul him as soon as he got the first chance. Yeah. No, no, that, that's true. I didn't know it. Um, I just sort of tried to motivate him to, um, you know, to do his best and give his all uh, for the team and for himself. but. Um, yeah, like you say, the, the minute he went on, he, uh, you know, he went ballistic. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, a great way of describing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's be honest; it were only it was one person's fault. The West Brom player that played in the hospital pass, because yes. that was one of the worst passes I've ever seen. It was like, you're almost like Patrick. Uh, it's almost like uh, George Santos had given him like twenty quid to go and give him a terrible <laughs> yeah, pass. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, so you're obviously a fan's favourite at the lane. We've already spoke about the goose thing. Do you think that was uh, the start of why the fans kind of took to you so well? Because it was like something to chat. Because to be honest, right now, we've got uh, Chris Basham, who's a massive fan's favourite. He's still not really got a song. So like, obviously, you had a chant straight away, pretty much. <laughs> it was great. We loved it. Yeah, definitely. And I think it was, it was, it was quite easy as well. Well, you know what I mean? Like, if the whole stadium went like, goose, <laughs> it sort of went like, you know, give a boost. And maybe yeah. to the other place as well. So, um, yeah, it was just one of those things, you know. It was quite easy to say and to, to get along with. So, um, yeah. So, when, when you were at Sheffield United, you knew that we weren't booing you, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I knew that, good. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, but, Goose, good. W- were you aware of how popular you were at Bramall Lane? Not really, no. I'm, like I said, I know, you know, the fans sort of liked, liked me um, for maybe, you know, my speed or, you know, um, doing my best on the pitch and, you know, always be, um, be good to the fans. But, um, yeah, like you say, not really that, that popular, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Well, here we are, twenty years later, still talking about you. That's that's got to feel great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it feels good. It feels good. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, you know that you've got so, a time to um, you know, to take this 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 little interview. You know, that's yeah. um, twenty years after. That's um, that's good. Good, good. Also, you had um, another right back vying for your spot at one point, uh, Mister Robert Kozluk. Now, Rob Kozluk. <laughs> We've heard a lot of stories about him in the past. Have you got any stories yourself? Because <laughs> <laughs> he, oh my God, he's, he's, he's a character. He's just, he does everything no one wants to do. I can remember, I, th- I think Saab's just signed for the club and he wore a jumper and we were going to train. And then all of a sudden, because he put his jumper on and went in goal. So everyone was shooting. And all of a sudden, Sars was shooting a goal and he thought, that's my jumper. And because he had it on and he was diving around the muddy oh. pitch. Oh, my God. He's, he's a character. He just does any, everything. Yeah. I love that. In fact, you're actually yeah. the first one to give us a proper Kozluk story. 
<laughs> so <Yeah>. thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. You never scored for Sheffield United, but no. if you had, did you have a celebration ready? Um, no, not really. No, no. I think I don't know. Something that just pops up in my head or whatever. Maybe what, a little. What, what did you or... do in your career when you scored? Well, when I was at Ipswich, I was sort of doing a little dance. Uh, when I, I wish we'd seen that. I, I wish, wish we'd seen that. Seen that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that you'd just become even weird. more popular. <laughs> what sort of dance was it? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, a little shuffle, you know, a little shake, something like that. Can you imagine in, <laughs> like in the that. clubs in Sheffield, people were like, oh, no, 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 we're not doing that dance this season. We're doing the goose. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, yeah, is, that, is, is that a shuffle, that hell? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, goose yeah. wasn't going to do it. Been good. <laughs> yeah, that would have been good. That would have been great. Yeah. Uh, so you played for six more English clubs. Um, other than Bradford City... Which other club, and obviously Sheffield United, because Sheffield United is top of the list, obviously. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. What other clubs did you really, really enjoy at, and where did you play some good football? Um, obviously, Ipswich, you know, my first club. Um, you know, it was, it was nice. Got some um, um, playoff uh, games and stuff like that. Obviously, Fulham, um, because I won the Division 2 champions we were. You know, got the medal, so that, that was quite good. Um, yeah, and so you know, I I just love love playing football. So basically, obviously, at all the big clubs like Ipswich, a field uh, of United, uh, Fulham, you know, it was good. You know, because they've they've got history. But even at the smaller clubs like uh, like a Wickham or a Mansfield, um, yeah, it was good. It was good to play. Did you, know, you uh, so, um, yeah, I would say all the clubs. Yeah, did you live in Sheffield when you uh, played for Sheffield United? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say because Mansfield's not too far from Sheffield. Yeah, I just wondered if you uh, uh, lived around here. No, that's true. If, if, um, if, um, no, even when I uh, signed for Wickham, I stayed in um, uh, Sheffield. Wow. I just travelled up with um, uh, by train um, because obviously uh, my wife and kids were there. And they were, we were based there, and uh, my kids went to nursery there. So, um, yeah, instead of uh, moving up again for the season or whatever, we just stayed um, in Sheffield. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a beautiful city, and it's amazing how many players actually decide to stay in Sheffield when they eventually uh, finish living there so much. It sounds to me like you enjoyed living in the Steel City as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Obviously, it was a shock when we first got there, you know what I mean, as being a Steel City. Um, yeah, but, you know, you find a nice place to live. And I will, we, we were going to stay there um, in Sheffield. But then all of a sudden, after your career's finished, you know, um, you're thinking like, you know, what can I do? What shall I do? You know, with the kids going to school as well. They were on an age, um, you know, when we had to make decisions. So we decided to, um, to go back to Holland. But, um, yeah, we've lived there. Um, yeah, quite pleasant. We could have done this in, um, in, in real life, couldn't we? <laughs> that would have been nice that would have been nice yeah. that would have been lovely yeah. yeah so what are your fondest memories of your time at Sheffield United fondest wow well obviously my debut um, you know for any club is, um, is, is special and obviously um, the derby games uh, against Wednesday yeah they, they were they were amazing you know Especially seeing one of them uh, when they're at um, Gerald Seaborn, another Dutchman. Oh, that was a strike! That yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. definitely, definitely. But I remember for I think we won up there. Yeah, we won two one. Yeah, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, was, I was sort of I was sort of marking Seaborn sort of like so. Um, no, that was good. That was good. Yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't remind people that you games. were marking the only Sheffield Wednesday player who scored. <laughs> did, did you know did you know him because wasn't Gerald Sibon um, Dutch as well yeah yeah well he was from yeah 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 he was Dutch he was yeah. Dutch as well did, did you already know him before um, before the game sort of thing not really in person I know I knew his name um, you know he played for different different clubs uh, different parts of Holland so um, mm. yeah 
Um, so have you, since you've uh, retired and finished football and everything, have you been back to Bramall Lane since or back to the uh, the city since? No, no. Not been, not been, none of my clubs, to be honest. Uh, I would love to, yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, I would love to go back. And uh, Goose, you got to wait. Yeah. Wait till the fans are back in, because I'm telling you now, the reaction yeah. you would get at Bramall Lane, <laughs> the whole crowd, Goose, it would yeah. put hairs on the back of your neck. You'd have yeah, everybody definitely. just lifting him up and, and <laughs> chanting, <laughs> walking through. Yeah, yeah you've got to come back. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I have to do that. I have to come back with my boys, show them where um, where their dad played football. And um, no, definitely, definitely would love to come back. But um, yeah, after all this, um, you know, pandemic going on, um, it's over. So um, yeah, would love to. Do you still keep an eye out for uh, Blades results and and things like that? Yeah, obviously, obviously, I always look at all my um, my old clubs uh, for the results, and obviously. As United being uh, in the Prem now, um, especially last season as well, they were doing unbelievable. Mm. They were doing really well, and obviously, yeah, you know, second season is um, is always much difficult because teams know how you play. Um, but yeah, still enjoy watching them. What about your boys? Have you brought them up to be uh, die-hard Sheffield United fans, or are they more interested in Ajax? <laughs> No, the, the massive Bradford City fans. Well, not even. <laughs> not even Ajax, because if you watch um, Champions League or whatever, they're, um, you know, Liverpool, Chelsea. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you've got a lot of work still to do. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but they've still, be... still got their kid, though. they still got their United kid. Oh, fabulous. That's was my next question. That's great. Okay, good. As long as you've got a yeah, kit for them. Good. I'm, I'm very happy yeah, with yeah. that answer. Yeah. So, what, what are you actually doing these days? Are you still involved in the beautiful game? At amateur level, uh, you know, I'm an assistant coach. Um, yeah, you know, that's nice. Just sort of try to bring my experience to um, uh, to the guys. Um, yeah, that's it, really. Yeah, not at a um, professional level, but um, yeah. Any interest in, in doing the coaching badges and getting into management? I've done a few badges, um, but then it, mm. it takes so much time doing, um, you know, going all the way up. So, um, you know, I think I'll just leave it at that. Fair enough. Is, is there anything else yeah. that you're doing at the moment, job-wise? Are you, uh, um, yeah, is there is there anything else going on in your life at the moment? No, nothing, uh, nothing special, really. No. Just well, enjoy we your family life. Yeah, quite right. Well yeah, deserved yeah, as well definitely. after a, a long career. We can't wait to welcome you back to uh, Bramall Lane. As you say, when the world has gone back to normal and when fans are back in, it would be just fantastic to give you the send-off that I feel you deserve because in football, it's very much like one day you're there, the next day the season ends and you're released. And it's such a yeah. shame the fans never get to say thank you and goodbye. And that's exactly what happened to you. You were there yeah. one, one season and then you weren't. And, and I know for us, Nick and I, we spoke about this, how much we wanted to say thank you. You know, you, may, you made us get off, off our feet with your marauding runs down the right, your pace, and the fact that you gave your all every game. So thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. That's, that, that's one of those things as well. Like that's, um, you know, in football, then like, like you said, one minute you're there and then the next, boom, gone, summer. I, I, I remember actually... We didn't know if you were going to stay or not. And your final game that I saw you play for Sheffield United was one of your best performances. And, and I, I thought there's maybe a chance that Goose is going to get a, a new contract. Did you always know that it was going to end when it did? Or did Neil Warnock wait till the end of the season? No, because I think it was the last two months, I think. He called me in his office and I was playing every weekend. Mm. And he said, like, yeah, um, we also want you on loan. And I'm like, why do I want to go on loan if I'm playing here? And he's like, well, I want to try cause look there and um, this and that, you know, he was, he was a bit younger. So, um, you know, just go there and see what it's like. And I just wanted to play football. So I wasn't going to sit on the bench or whatever, you know. So, um, yeah, I went to Walsall and then obviously you knew that was the end of it. Then I sort of played at Walsall last two months, I think, on loan, sort of. And then I got a call from Bradford, so I already knew I was going to leave um, United. 
How old were you round about when you left Sheffield United? Because you said that he wanted to bring Cosy in because he was a bit younger. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What, what season did I leave? 2002. 2002. I think you were in your prime. I think you were Yeah, 26. I was thinking that. Yeah, about 26, 20, yeah, 26, 27, sort of. Yeah, scandalous. You, scandalous. you were in your prime and you were about to have your best season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was strange, but then I think he thought, well, I'll play Cozzy and maybe bring someone else in. So, um, yeah, you can Well, leave, we're, so. we're definitely not having a go at Cozzy because Cozzy ended up being a wonderful <laughs> yeah. right back. Yeah, for definitely, us. So, definitely. So yeah. we're not, we're not yeah. saying that at all. I, I've got yeah. one more thing for you now. This might sound like a really strange question and I don't even know if you'll remember. So that's why I've saved it till the end. But it was a game away at Grimsby, and my memory might not be as accurate as it used to be, and it has been 20 years. But I seem to remember a case of mistaken identity with a sending off. And I don't know if you remember this, but it was yourself and Bobby Ford, and the referee got you two mixed up. And one of you got sent off. I can't remember which one it was. Yeah, I, Do you remember I any of this? I remember, yeah. I remember. Um, I think. I think Bobby went off. Yeah, I think Bobby went off as well. Yeah, I, th- I think Bobby went off. Yeah, yeah. But it's strange because my dad said at the time, "It's like you don't look alike." Not, <laughs> not the slightest. No, not the slightest. No. Very, very odd. No. I'm glad you remember that. It's not just me going mad in my old yeah. age. No, 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 no. Definitely not. <laughs> now you're saying it. Uh, I remember it. Yeah. Some yeah. man. Definitely. Uh, Nick, have you got any final question as well for uh, Goose? I don't think so. It's just been great to speak to you. You've been a lovely, lovely chap, and we really enjoyed speaking to you to uh, this evening, Gus. Yeah, definitely. It was good, good chatting to you both. So uh, yeah, thanks for that. Thank you very much for giving up the time, Gus Ulenbeek. We will hopefully no see you at Bramall Lane in 2021, uh, where we yeah, can definitely. serenade you live with Goose. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs>